Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Punchy bringing you today's headlines, including the latest on the teacher accused of having a sexual relationship with a student in Stratford, postal workers intercepting a cocaine delivery, and much more. Rob Adams will join me with sports and weather, and Donald Ang will take a look back in history. Later in the show, our editorial director, John Kovach, will join me to take a look at the front pages of our papers this week. But first, on to today's news. A Chapel Street school teacher in Stratford is facing sexual assault charges for allegedly engaging in a sexual relationship with a student. As we told you yesterday, police charged 28-year-old Michelle Sulzicki with first-degree sexual assault, second-degree sexual assault, illegal sexual contact with a minor, and risk of injury to a minor. Superintendent Janet Robinson said Sulzicki is a special education teacher at Chapel Street School. Robinson said Sulzicki has been a teacher at Chapel for about three years. At a press conference, Police Chief Frank Reidenauer said Sulzicki and the male student had a relationship for at least three years, and it began when the boy was 12 years old. So Zicky was a teacher's aide at the time. The teacher was with the district since 2010, but has only been a teacher for about three years. Although they were in the same school at one time, Silziki was not the boy's teacher, according to the superintendent. According to a wedding announcement published by the Stratford Star in February 2013, the former Michelle Del Vecchio was listed as a graduate of Bunnell High School and Central Connecticut State University. She also received a master's degree from Fairfield University. According to the Superior Court Clerk's Office, Silziki will next appear in court on November 3rd. In a press conference video captured by Stratford Starter Melvin Mason, Superintendent Robinson had this to say about the arrest. Ladies for being here. Outraged and appalled are the only words that can describe this very disturbing allegation being made regarding the inappropriate conduct of a teacher with a student. As soon as there was an indication of a possible crime, our immediate response was to remove that teacher from any further contact with any of our students. The moment we were notified of this, the teacher was immediately placed on paid administrative leave. I am now in the process of moving toward terminating this individual. We have been told by investigators that no impropriety occurred on school property and that this happened after school hours. Nonetheless, there is zero tolerance for this type of behavior. As educators, our mission is to protect and educate all students and to at all times act in their very best interests. We appreciate the due diligence of the Stratford Police Department whom we have worked very closely with throughout this process. Thank you, police officers, for your support and compassion. And there's a lot more on that story at StraffordStar.com. Well, alert postal workers in Monroe may have kept more than a kilogram of cocaine worth more than $40,000 off the streets. According to police, the Postal Investigation Service intercepted a package suspected of containing illegal narcotics addressed to a Monroe business October 2nd. Police said the postal inspectors obtained a federal search and seizure warrant and opened the package at Monroe Police Headquarters. The package, which was addressed to Josu Gonzalez, 37 years old of Bridgeport, at his place of employment, contained 2.2 pounds of cocaine with a street value of about $40,000. The package was resealed and members of the Monroe Police Department, U.S. Postal Inspectors and agents from the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration conducted a controlled delivery of the package to Gonzalez at his place of employment on Route 25. Gonzalez reportedly accepted delivery of the package, walked to his car, and was backing out of a parking space when he was taken into custody by police. Gonzalez was the only person at this location involved, and other employees and the owner of the business had no knowledge of Gonzalez's illegal activities, police said. Gonzalez was charged with narcotics possession, possession with intent to sell, and possession of narcotics within 1,500 feet of a school or daycare facility. Bond for him was set at $75,000 for court October 15th. Well, on Saturday, October 10th, at about 1.15 in the morning, a suspect pictured in this police, uh, in this Shelton surveillance footage, attempted to gain entry into a residence located in the Huntington section of the city, according to Shelton police. 
The suspect attempted to enter the home but was unable to. He then entered the victim's car in the driveway, which rolled across the yard into the woods. The suspect then fled the scene on foot, police said. The victim contacted the police department the following day after reviewing the footage and the captured suspect attempting to break into their home. The Shelton Police Department are seeking the public's assistance in identifying the suspect pictured in that footage. Residents are reminded to lock their home, vehicles, and exterior sheds on their property. Anyone with information can contact the Shelton Police Department at 203-924-1544. Well, police say a person was struck and killed by a train in Connecticut. The Associated Press reports that the Department of Transportation says a Shoreline East train hit someone trespassing on the tracks near Pleasant Point Road in Brantford Wednesday evening. The tracks have been shut down and there were delays. Police say it happened around 7.30 in the evening. The train was heading east and there were most likely passengers on board. Amtrak police are overseeing the investigation, but Brantford police and firefighters also responded. The Milford Police Department Special Investigations Unit is investigating the complaint of a missing Milford girl, 15-year-old Waymesha Frazier. Waymesha is described as 5 foot 3 inches, 135 pounds, with black hair that's been dyed blonde and brown eyes. She was last seen at her home at 152 Washington Street in Milford on October 13th around 2 a.m. when she was seen getting into a dark colored SUV. Waymesha was last seen wearing a black leather jacket and blue jeans. She may be at an unknown location in Bridgeport, police said. Anyone with information is act to, asked to contact detectives in Milford at 203-878-6551. You can also visit milfordpd.org and click Crime Tips. Well, it's time to throw it over to Rob Adams now, who's joining me to give us a look at today's weather, which is gorgeous so far, Rob. Off to a good start, Kate, for sure, and good morning to you and good morning, everyone. We do have a beautiful day outside, sunny skies overhead, sunny day, high near 62 with a northwest wind around 7, becoming west in the afternoon, increasing clouds tonight, low of 47. I don't know about all of you, but when I walked out this morning, and I didn't walk out too early, 35 when I left my home, so that sweatshirt really needed it. Slight chance of showers on Friday before 1 in the afternoon. Cloudy through mid-morning, then gradual clearing a high near 63. We will all celebrate that news. Why? I will explain to you uh, in a couple of minutes. Partly cloudy and a low 42 Friday night. Yes, heavy sweatshirt, jacket needed. Sunny and 54 for Saturday. Mostly clear, low 34 for Saturday night. Sunny and 50 for Sunday, but 32 is your low for Sunday night. 51 as we get back to the work week with a sunny day. Right now in Shelton, we have 58 degrees. Ridgefield has 53. And in Weston, it is 56 degrees, Kate. All right. Thanks, Rob. Well, we're going to take a quick break and come back with Donald Ang's look back on this day in history. Rob's going to be talking local sports, and we have a lot more news on your coffee break after this. Darian Sports Shop is a unique store because it's a family store. A busy mom can come in with kids in tow and find everything she needs for them and even find a dress for herself for Saturday night. And if she's in a rush, she can simply go home and order it from us that night. We'll deliver it the next day. The Darian Sports Shop. We're pretty on the outside and amazing on the inside. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darian, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariansport.com. When you experience a sports injury, you want to get better and fast. Coastal Ortho Express gives you direct access to orthopedic care quickly. Their physicians are fellowship trained in sports medicine at world-class universities and are also team doctors for area football teams. For specialized personal care of sports injuries, go to Coastal Ortho Express. Open Monday through Saturday in the iPark building, 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Coastal Orthopedics, keeping you on the move. Does buying a car leave you feeling like you're chasing your tail? Head straight to Pamby Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram and take car buying in a whole new direction. Back to school means back to busy, and Stewart's Market can save you precious time by stocking all of your favorite essentials under one roof. For a healthy start to school, we have all the ingredients. 
Walter Stewart's, your family-owned fresh local market, 229 Elm Street and at stewartsmarket.com. Back to school Fall means- bite is heating up. Albies, Bonita, Blackfish, Alligator Blues, and Stripers are following the large schools of bait in the Long Island Sound. This is the time to visit the New England coast, and the Dock Shop can get you outfitted with the latest fishing gear, jackets, hats, gloves, and fleece. Boater, beach bomb, fishermen simply love the New England coast. This is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, now in two locations, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. And we're back on this Thursday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, and as always, it's time to throw it over to Donald Ang's look back on this day in history. Don. Well, thanks, Kate. It was one of the most beloved television shows in history, and it had its premiere today. A while ago, what, 19, well, whatever. Uh, we start first in 1860. 11-year-old Grace <laughs> Bettle writes a letter to presidential candidate Abraham Lincoln. The letter stated that Lincoln had a very thin face and would look better if he grew a beard. Lincoln responded in a letter dated October 19th, making no promises to grow out his whiskers, <laughs> writing, Having never worn any, do you not think people would call it a silly affection if I were to begin it now? Within a month, though, Abe had a beard. 1863, the American Civil War, the Confederate submarine H.L. Hunley, the first submarine to sink an enemy ship, sinks during a test, killing its inventor, H.L. Hunley. 1917, World War I. Dutch exotic dancer Mata Hari executed by firing squad for spying for the German Empire. Born Margaretha Zell, she took the stage name Mata Hari and claimed to be a classically trained Hindu temple dancer despite having no Indian heritage and very limited dancing skills. The blatant exhibitionism of her performances made her a sensation and allowed her free passage across international borders and access to high-ranking government officials. The original femme fatale, she used her considerable powers of seduction to extract military and political information, which she then sold to the German Empire. A performer to the end, she died in an outfit that she'd had custom made for the occasion. And finally, 1951, there was this. the first episode of I Love Lucy, the show starred Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz and featured elaborate slapstick verbal banter and absurd situations as Lucy was on an endless quest to become famous, often exasperating her husband who would then start muttering rapidly in Spanish. ABC rates it the best television show of all time. I love I Love Lucy. That's your look back in history, and I'm Donald Ng. All right. Thanks, Don. Appreciate it. Well, before we bring Rob Adams in for sports, I'm going to get back to the news quickly. In New Canaan, Robert Joseph Squayo, 24 years old of Norwalk, was arrested for pilfering medical marijuana from a home off Ponis Ridge Road where he worked. Squayo was employed as a serviceman for a garage door company. According to New Canaan Police, Lieutenant Jason Ferraro, this was the first case of medical marijuana theft that he could recall in New Canaan's history. Squayo stole four Four bottles of marijuana, with each bottle containing 3.5 grams. He became the prime suspect when it was determined that he had just completed work at the residence and had been in the area where the weed was stored. When approached by police, Squayo admitted to having taken the marijuana from the home and dumping it into a storm drain still in the bottles. He was charged with six-degree larceny and illegally obtaining drugs. He was also charged with possession of less than half an ounce of marijuana and paraphernalia as a result of a search of his vehicle. Squayo was released on a $500 bond with an October 21st court date in Norwalk. At the end of the day, the victim was reunited with her stolen medical marijuana, according to the advertiser. All right, Rob, time to take a look at high school sports. What's going on? All right, Kate, thank you, and good morning once again, everyone. By the way, I was more of a MASH Seinfeld guy myself, but that's neither here nor there. Let's get things started with field hockey, where Wilton shut down Trumbull 5 0. It was Norwalk over Ludlow 2 0. Greenwich beat New Canaan 1 zip as Paige Mountner scored the game's only goal for the Cardinals. Ward over New 
Duquesne in three nothing in volleyball. It's staying in volleyball, Staples three, Norwalk nothing, Darien by three over Wilton. Ludlow all, won all three of their matches with Trinity Catholic and St. Joe's over West Hill three to one as the Vikings took the first match, but the Cadets responded by winning the next three for the 3-1 victory again St. Joseph with the win. Du Bois soccer a 2-2 tie between Greenwich and Danbury. Stamford knocked off Central 3-0. Ludlow and Ward. Gosh, I hate these. A scoreless draw. <clears throat> Penalty kicks, give me something. All right, Trumbull over Trinity Catholic, 7-1. Wilton 4, McMahon nil. New Canaan over St. Joe's, 2-1. And Darien over West Hill, 3-2. But that being said, I don't love the shootout in hockey either. On to today's schedule. you got Danbury and Greenwich at 4 in girls soccer. Trinity Catholic at Trumbull at 4 as well. Darien hosting West Hill. It's Central at Stanford. St. Joe's at New Canaan. Ridgefield home for Norwalk. Wilton at McMahon. And Ward is at Ludlow. As for field hockey, Staples is at Danbury, St. Joseph at Darien, Ridgefield home for Ward, West Hill at Stamford. Girls volleyball, Greenwich at Stamford, and a girls swimming and diving, St. Joseph takes on Norwalk McMahon in Norwalk, and it's Greenwich at Danbury. Finally, your HAN, FCAC, HAN Network FCAC Athlete of the Week nominations and those vote tabulations. Well, we're still counting since I put out the call yesterday on Nutmeg Sports. I feel I feel like there was a boost off of that fine program yesterday because we have jumped up to almost 1,200 votes on the male side with Pablo Martinez of Darien leading the way at 31%. From there, it's Jack Potenza of Fairfield Ward, Timmy Graham of Darien Football, Peter Swindell, the football player of New Canaan, Tyler Diaz from Stanford getting I gotta tell you, Stanford, Tyler Diaz, or Tyrell Diaz, rather, who we saw last week at Danbury, three touchdowns, the big Jerome Bettis type runner, not getting a lot of love from all of you, so I'm just saying. And Christian Trafone also on the ballot. On the girls' side, Jillian Presser of Trumbull Girls Soccer doing very well. She leads the ballot right now. Marcy McGuire, Ridgefield Swimming, is second followed by Alexa Montani of Fairfield Ward Girls Soccer, Kate Murray of Darien Swimming and Diving, Meredith Heaney of New Canaan Field Hockey, Georgia Cassidy of Darien Field Hockey, and finally, Lisa Balzas of Stanford Volleyball. By the way, once again, the girls are getting out the vote, 1,800 votes on the female side. So keep that voting going on. It closes tomorrow at 2. We'll make the announcement of the winners during FCAC Tailgate, which starts at 4. Kate. And Don have that for you tomorrow, FCAC game day, Dave Stewart and myself at 5. And then Chris Irway and I have the play-by-play -play tomorrow night from Ridgefield. That's why we're excited that the rain will have stopped despite those temperatures in the low 40s. Chris and I will have the calls. The Ridgefield Tigers host the Trinity Catholic Crusaders. Kick it off at 7. We'll be on the air right before 7 o'clock. Looking forward to it tomorrow night. I think that's going to be a good one with sports. I'm Rob Adams. Let's send it back over to Kate. All right. Thanks, Rob. Well, getting back to some of today's news, the Darien Police Department is issuing a traffic advisory in order to alert motorists of a travel restriction and partial road closure that's occurring this Saturday in the area of Tokenique School. The school, located on the corner of Tokenique Road and Old Farm Road, will be holding its annual pumpkin fair on October 17th with a rain date of Sunday, October 18th. Between the hours of 9.30 and 4.30, Old Farm Road will be closed to all incoming traffic. It will be open for outgoing traffic only. All Tokenique area residents are advised to enter the Tokenique area through the alternate entrances of Arrowhead Way, Driftway Lane, or Five Mile River Road. Ample off-street parking is available for those attending the fair at Colangelo Group or Zotos International. Some on-street parking will also be permitted on Tokenique Road as posted. As in, in the past, police said there is no parking allowed on Old Farm Road. Additionally, there is no parking anytime on any private road that belongs to the Tokenique Association. The Tokenique Park Police will be patrolling the private roads off the Tokenique Association to deter violations. The Darien Police Department will have officers assigned to the event to assist both motorists and pedestrians. You can find out more about the Pumpkin Festival at DarienTimes.com. 
Ridgefield Stonehenge Restaurant and Inn, founded shortly after World War II, is celebrating a grand reopening under Jean-Pierre Rudai, who has become the sixth restaurateur to offer dining on a pond-side site that was once the home of grist and cider mill operators. Jennifer Ponte Canning, Stonehenge's marketing director, told the Ridgefield Press, quote, we're keeping the same character. We want it to still be the same Stonehenge as founded by Victor Gilbert in the 1940s, but it's more accessible and not as exclusive, she said. There will be no jacket or tie required or dresses. They said they want to reach a new generation of patrons that are not as formal. Ridgefield Town Hall records show that Douglas Seville, who has owned Stonehenge the last 42 years, sold the 10-acre property May 13th for just under $2 million to Drew Friedman of Westport. Friedman has owned Cobbs Mill Inn in Weston and Onion Alley in Westport, but will not be the new face of Stonehenge, according to Cannon. The menu is new, but still one that reveals high culinary ambitions. Dinner entrees range from trout greno blasé, brown butter, capers, parsley, potatoes, and lemon for $22, to filet of beef rossini, and a lot more. There's a lot more on that restaurant at the ridgefieldpress.com. Going to throw it back over to Rob Adams for another look at today's weather. Rob? I'm more impressed with the way you were pronouncing some of those uh, <laughs> items, Kate. Well done. I'm, you know, I kind of freeze up at S car to go, but that's about <laughs> it for me. A sunny day, high near 62. Beautiful day outside right now, and it looks like it's going to stay that way until the evening. We have increasing clouds rolling in tonight, a low of 47. The wind's staying fairly calm, northwest around 7 this afternoon, southwest tonight from three to five, not too bad. To Friday we go. Now we do have a slight chance of showers before one in the afternoon, but as I said, we're okay with that. We'll either be in our comfy rig outside Ridgefield High School's Lancaster Field at Tiger Hollow for coffee break, or we'll be underneath the awning. We'll be covered though for tomorrow in Ridgefield and tomorrow night for the game, we should be okay. Slight chance of showers before one, cloudy through mid-morning, then gradual clearing and a high near 63 with a west wind six to 10 and the chance of precipitation only 20%. Friday night, partly cloudy, low 42, so you're going to want to bundle up with a west wind around 7. Saturday, sunny and 54. Mostly clear for Saturday night, low 34. Mostly sunny and 50 for Sunday. Mostly clear and 32 for Sunday night. 51 and sunny as we get back to work next week. Shelton has 58. We have 53 degrees in Ridgefield. And in Weston, it's 56 degrees, Kate. All right. Thanks, Rob. Well, we're going to take another break and come back with a lot more news. We're also going to start getting ready to take a look at our HAN Network front pages this week. So that's coming up after this. Here at the Darien Sports Shop, we are very excited about our newly redesigned men's department. Gentlemen, if you're shopping for work, weekend, or wedding, we've got the latest styles and trends inside our spacious new department just for you. We have vast selections from Peter Millar, Vineyard Vines, Johnny O, Duckhead, Barber, and so much more. And you can even walk out of the store in the new Wolverine 1000 Mile Men's Boot. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariansport.com. Healthy, confident smiles begin at Stratford Orthodontics. Conveniently located on Main Street, we are Stratford's hometown orthodontist. We offer the latest in orthodontic technology, including Damon braces and Invisalign. We always accept new patients. Call today to schedule a complimentary consultation. 203-375-8332. Stratford Orthodontics, 2499 Main Street, Stratford. 203-375-8332. And online at StraffordSmile.com. Football Healthy. University, the nation's leading football training experience, is now accepting applications for its 2015 camps. Our elite faculty of NFL coaches and top professionals teach position-specific on the field and in the classroom to improve your football IQ and help you reach your full potential as a player. Apply today at footballuniversity.org. Football University, where technique plus talent beats talent alone. It's time to come back to hometown banking, where people are taken into account, not just balances, where community comes first, a place where there's more than one kind of interest, 
where automation will never replace consideration. Where they not only know your name, they know your dog's name too. It's time to expect more. It's time to bank well. Bank smart. Bank local. Bank well. Alliance. We are an industry leader in coordinating transportation for large events such as corporate road shows, conferences, and special events. Our team of experts understands the dynamics and logistics of high-pressure situations and complex arrangements, all within a rapidly changing environment. Since 1999, we have added charter jets, event management, and personal protection to our range of services. Mention this ad for $25 off your next round trip reservation. Alliance and you. Together, we can achieve the extraordinary. 855-546-6996 or AllianceLimo.com. And we're back on this Thursday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski bringing you some of today's headlines. Joel Barlow High School will be hosting its 7th annual Veterans Day celebration on Wednesday, November 11th, and they're looking for all veterans who live in Easton and Reading who are invited to attend. The program will run from 7.40 in the morning through 12.15 in the afternoon. A continental breakfast and lunch will be served. Veterans will meet with small groups of students to share their experiences prior to an assembly in the auditorium honoring all veterans. This year, Joel Barlow is running two programs on Veterans Day, the Veterans Day Celebration and the Annual War and Remembrance Program. Holocaust survivors are also invited to take part in the War and Remembrance Program. Veterans and survivors can RSVP to Jordan Pinsky at Joel Barlow by calling 203-938-2508, extension 1114, or by emailing jpinsky at er9.org. Well, the Weston Forum reports that this morning the Weston Public Schools are experiencing intermittent phone disruption on their normal business phone lines, according to a notice on the school district's website. The notice says the schools are working with the vendor to address this issue as soon as possible. All schools continue to have emergency lines of communication fully operational. Darien schools anticipate a $2.2 million shortfall in the special education budget, but remain optimistic that the difference can be made up within the current budget. This news came during a report on the 2015-16 district budget at Tuesday's Board of Education meeting. Schools Finance Director Michael Feeney turned the floor to Superintendent Dr. Brenner, who explained the budget numbers as they pertain to special education. Brenner said the new revised forecast is based on encumbrance and anticipated cost. The encumbrance is the funds already put aside and or paid out to vendors, plus money outstanding in the contract. Anticipated costs include pending 2015-2016 IEPs and settlements. According to the superintendent, the reason we highlighted what's forecast versus what's budgeted is to show what we thought was in the works and what we are now projecting in the future. Brenner explained that last year the board budgeted $7 million for special education. The administration forecast is now at $8.8 .8 million. Brenner said, we know there will be additional costs as the year progresses, and we've built in another $350,000, which in essence accounts for the unanticipated folks who may show up and will be needing services. This brings them to a grand total of $9.2 million. He noted that last year's actual spending on special education was $8.3 million, the large overruns are in non-public school tuition and contracted speech. The 2015-16 budget for non-public school tuition was $4.6 million, and the current encumbrance is $5.6 million. The administration anticipates spending another $375,000. There's more on that story at DarianTimes.com. Several hundred Ridgefield families with children checked out the town's new Imagination Station playground at Ballard Park over its first weekend. The playground is the first of its kind in the United States and is aimed at providing exercise, not just passive recreation. Paul Roach, who is the Ridgefield Director of Parks and Recreation, said, We had a tremendous response. Hundreds of people were over there. The department built the playground at a cost of more than $500,000. About $200,000 came as a matching grant from a private donor, George Landegger. 
The town provided $101,000 from the capital improvement budget, and the rest came from private donations or in-kind services. The playground takes the place of a traditional one that had entertained children at Ballard Park for more than 25 years. The playground is wheelchair accessible, and it encourages children to build their upper body strength. The grand opening will be Election Day, Tuesday, November 3rd, with a rope climbing event called Rock the Ropes. Well, that's going to do it for this news portion of your coffee break. When we come back, however, we're going to take a look at the front pages of our HAN Network newspapers this week. So that's coming up after this. Cut Rockefeller Estate is Westchester County's top cultural attraction and is now open for the season. Don't miss out. Go online to HudsonValley.org to plan your visit. Take a drive out to beautiful Sleepy Hollow, New York and enjoy Kai Cut's stunning architecture, breathtaking gardens, expansive art galleries, and commanding Hudson River views. From world-class art by Picasso and Warhol to expertly tended gardens, there's something for everyone. Kai Cut Rockefeller Estate, a national trust for historic preservation landmark. Kaikote Rockefeller Estate is Westchester County's top cultural attraction and is now open for the season. Don't miss out. Go online to HudsonValley.org to plan your visit. Take a drive out to beautiful Sleepy Hollow, New York and enjoy Kaikote's stunning architecture, breathtaking gardens, expansive art galleries. Does buying a car leave you feeling like you're chasing your tail? Head straight to Pamby Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram and take car buying in a whole new direction. While the temperatures are cooling down, the fall bite is heating up. Albies, Bonita, Blackfish, Alligator Blues, and Stripers are following the large schools of bait that are abundant in the Long Island Sound. If you love the New England coast during autumn, this is the time to be on the water. The latest from Shimano, Quantum, Avet, Hoagie, Phase 2, and more are in stock and ready to go at the dock shop. And don't mind those fall breezes with jackets, hats, gloves, and fleece from Grundens and Stormer. The dock shop will keep you warm and dry. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The dock shop, now in two locations, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. While the temperatures are... And we're back on this Thursday edition of your Coffee Break. I'm Kate Chaplinski, joined now by our editorial director, John Kovach, because it's Thursday. John, time to take a look at the front pages of our HAN Network papers this week. It is, and uh, no surprise, election coverage dominating the front pages as it will for the next few weeks. That's right. So what are you taking a look at right now, John? I'm looking at the Western Forum, and again, the, uh, the Navin story continues to make mm -hmm. headlines as the... Uh, couple is still missing, cadaver dogs unfortunately being called in to search for them. But to get to the elections, um, a story about the race for first selectman there. And this interesting uh, feature about a gentleman who is inching closer to his goal of walking every road in Weston. Wow, that's a unique goal. I like that. It's a that. neat idea. Yeah, that's interesting. And good for your health, I imagine. I would suppose. Well, I'm taking a look at the Trumbull Times. Nice front page this week. A uh, great photo by Lisa Romanchik of um, the Clothesline Project, which hangs outside the Trumbull Library. It's basically victims of domestic violence decorate these T-shirts and hang them out there with messages on them. Uh, great photo there. And, uh, you know, suffered scars, strong souls is, is uh, the kicker on that photo. It's really a nice project. There's a visual nature to that right. that really hammers home domestic violence. Definitely. It, it gives you that image while at the same time allowing the victim to make a statement that, hey, I'm still here. There's bright colors there. There's personal expression. 
I'm not beaten. I'm still here. Right. Really and as always, project. of course, in Trumbull, uh, political debate, Herbst and the town council Democrats clashing over a new policy that Herbst proposed and was eventually passed by the majority of Republicans on the council that basically seeks to prohibit any public official from submitting bids to do business or provide professional services to the town of Trumbull without exception. So I guess some Democrats weren't thrilled with that plan. I have to say, I would think that that would be kind of understood, no? Right, it's but there are a lot, yeah, I mean, it does make sense. There are a lot of uh, contractors, I guess, who are also public officials, and, you know, if they have the winning bid, but I get it. I could totally understand oh, yeah. why there'd be some debate about that. And, of course, a great photo of some pink pumpkins promoting breast cancer awareness. Very nice photo there. You don't often see pink pumpkins. No. Like pink lemonade, I would suppose. Or yeah. What are you doing there? I don't know how you dye it's those. That's neat. interesting. Look, more traditional orange pumpkins on the front page <laughs> of the Ridgefield Press with a great name for this event. You know, fall in love with Ridgefield. Hits with the season. Just, uh, yeah, really looks like uh, your typical Hall Halloween autumn theme. Yes. You've got a uh, little Oktoberfest looking uh, scarecrow there. Um, some more news about the Schlumberger project and uh, the options for it. that. It took me some time. <laughs> it truly took me time to get to get that one. And I thank you for that. <laughs> well, I'm taking a look at the Stratford Star. Uh, of course, the huge news this week was the teacher, Chapel Hill School teacher, who uh, is facing sexual assault charges for having a alleged relationship with a student for three years, uh, starting at the time that the student was 12 years old. A very disturbing story there and a lot of new details coming out. We showed some video earlier in the show that Melvin Mason captured at yesterday's press conference. The reaction from the superintendent there, Janet Robinson. That's a story that's going to continue to develop and watch StraffordStar.com for yes. updates, which will be coming in really as frequently as by the hour. Right. And then some nice photos of some St. James School students, parents, and faculty members who participated in Bike to School, which is nice. You know, St. James was our rival when I was a St. Mark student. So, ah, yeah. very handsome school, it's I can a, tell it's by the It's a beautiful building. school. I, my mother went there as a child, actually. The Reading Pilot covering the election with uh, debate coverage and the unfortunate news that a Reading Elementary School occupational therapist passed away unexpectedly on Sunday, plus a feature on Kyle Stevens, who finds inspiration in his neighbors, and it's a very surreal painting down below the second shot with that feature, so I don't know if he, if I live close enough to him that he got his inspiration for that from me, or what's going <laughs> on there, but, but very nice looking work, and I'm sure a fascinating feature on Kyle Stevens. All right, John. Well, I'm taking a look at the Shelton Herald, and nothing new here. This is a common story uh, every local election season, but there is a mayoral debate set up, minus one, and of course, but that of course. minus one is Mayor Mark Loretti, because in the past he has refused to debate his opponents. He said he doesn't feel it's necessary. People know his message. However, there is still a scheduled I guess you would call it a discussion with his Democratic challenger, Michelle Bialik. And she said uh, to the Shelton Herald that it's still not too late for Mayor Mark Loretti to change his mind about participating in the debate that is taking place October 19th. So we'll see what happens. I, I wouldn't, you know, bet that he would join it, but you never know. I doubt he's going to, but I'm always of the belief that that sends the wrong message. It's worked for Mark because he's been reelected for decades. Right. But I just think not participating sends the wrong message. Right. And, of course, Chief Herleman, uh, Chief Joel Herleman in Shelton is stepping down. Uh, more on that on Shelton Herald. He said it was his time. He was promoted to chief back in 2006, and I've worked, you know, closely with Chief Herleman. He did a great, he's done a great job. So, great paper there, Shelton Herald. Dramatic photographs in the New Canaan Advertiser of a car fire, and firefighters were able to rescue a woman from this car which really was consumed by flames after a crash but it points to a bigger story that's been known in New Canaan really since I was editor there and that was from 1997 through uh, 2008 mm -hmm. and that is that there are huge gaps in cell service 
because it's so wooded, because they fight every cell tower. And apparently in this case, there were problems getting emergency responders to the scene as this car was consumed by flames with a right. woman trapped inside because you can't right. link to a cell tower. Right, the neighbors who tried to rescue her had to walk up a hill to get uh, some service. Really incredible, incredible story there uh, and some great photos. And you know, New Canaan Advertiser did a great job on that. Well, I'm taking a look at the Monroe Courier. Of course, a story we mentioned earlier was that cocaine worth $40,000 was seized in Monroe. Somebody had attempted to send it via U.S. Postal Service to a, a Bridgeport man who works in Monroe. He picked it up. I mean, the Postal Service brought it to police. They suspected that it was drugs, and uh, he ended up getting caught for that. So... Interesting story there. And of course, a new health director in Monroe taking the helm. This is a result of Trumbull disbanding the Trumbull Monroe Health District. Trumbull made the vote that they wanted to leave the health district. And uh, Monroe kind of had to form their own district, uh, their own health department as a result. As Trumbull has. Excuse me, Kate. Sorry. The story that grabs me on that front page is about the runner mm. for Massac High School who participated in a charity run. And a coach from a rival school knew he did that. And apparently the state rules are, the CIAC rules are, if you run for your high school team, you cannot participate in season in a non-CIAC wow. event. That's in, that's a very interesting And they've interesting called story. him on this violation, which uh, if, if that's how you want to win, enjoy it. Wow. That's all I'm going to say. Wow, thanks for pointing that out. That is a really interesting story. So great front page of the Monroe Courier. What else are you looking at, John? Well, again, we get back to, and I think it just points to the fact that I've been doing this for a long, long time. <laughs> uh, the Darien Times lead story is that there are more than a dozen seats vacant in the RTM ballot, the representative town meeting ballot for the upcoming election. Now, they have a 100-member representative town meeting for the town of Darien. And when I was back there in the mid to late 90s, they always had trouble filling all of the vacancies. And there's always a debate, should we downsize it? Should we go to districts? Should we look at a different form of government, the town council government, such as you have in Stratford and New Canaan. But this is every election, there's a story that there are unfilled seats that are then appointed by people who never face the electorate. Hmm. And that's every year. And just a gorgeous shot that of Tilly Pond. I believe it to be Tilly Pond, and I am right, of uh, Tilly Pond in the fall, just a beautiful park, just really steps from downtown Darien right by, in, the, in view of the train station. That is gorgeous. Uh, I'm looking at the Milford Mirror right now, and of course this was huge news this week all over the place, which was the whole concept of Milford schools canceling Halloween, which the superintendent has come out and said was never the case. In fact, uh, some of the principals had discussed just canceling the Halloween parades where students dress up in their costumes and you know, kind of walk around the school and do a little parade. However, all the backlash on that, uh, some parents were upset, community members were upset, uh, a lot of media began reporting it, and uh, they reinstated those Halloween parades. So interesting story there. Not the kind of publicity Milford schools wanted. No, definitely not. So that was a huge story this week, obviously. Dramatic photo in the Lewisboro Ledger. Actually, two dramatic photos, but for very different reasons. Uh, one of a motor vehicle accident on Interstate 684 in Westchester. And the other, just a gorgeous shot of the inside of Caramore, which is a venue I really need to go to just over the line in New York City. I've never been there and heard such good things. And just like the New Canaan Advertiser had on its front page, news about the opening of Grace Farms, which is right on the border of New Canaan and Vista. And there was huge debate that was privately owned. And a lot of people in New Canaan wanted the town to buy it. The town did not. It ended up that a church that held services in New Canaan and purchased it. And now some of the land is still accessible to the public and they had a huge grand opening with music and dance and any number of events. Wow. So coverage in the New Canaan Advertiser and the Lewisboro Ledger. That's great. And just finally, taking a quick look at the Wilton Bulletin, just want to point out uh, what a great job our 
local our newspapers do with election coverage as you can see there's a lot of that happening now a nice nice time in advance where people can read it digest it and you know choose their candidates because that's a big deal and of course I just have to point out Brian Hayfley's beautiful photo uh, great photo there and there's going to be a guided hike through that area on Sunday so fantastic great uh, front page of the Wilton Bulletin John that's going to do it shot. yes it is so uh, everyone did a great job this week, as always. All right, John. Well, thanks so much for joining me. We are going to wrap up your coffee break, and we'll be back tomorrow live from Richfield at 11. But, however, Yankee Fisherman coming up Yankee at 1. Yankee Fisherman at 1. We've got more on collecting based on the Russell Bangley auction, including a resident of Connecticut and someone who traveled all the way from Alaska to New Jersey just twice a year to buy on the well, and Radio Arts, uh, not Radio Arts and Leisure, H-A-N Arts and Leisure coming up at 2, so be sure to watch that as well. Have a